Okay, in this segment I want to cover a couple of the sources and this time around we're going to go with your stove and oven and we're going to go with the furnace and I'm just going to go carefully through each of those bulleted items just to make sure that uh, everything that should be on your radar is. So the gas stove and oven is, you know, first the first rule is don't leave those things on just to warm the house. Um, I know that growing up my mom was guilty of that, I know that my mother-in-law was guilty of that, um, but in that sort of a scenario, you, you know, those things left on for a, for a longer period of time, if they do have a carbon monoxide leak, um, much more likely of health effects uh, associated with long-term use of the gas stove and oven. By contrast, you know, the next question that always comes up is if, well, if the gas stove were a problem, wouldn't it be a problem all the time? And the answer is that, you know, in many cases, if you're cooking something, maybe a skillet on, on the stove, you might be using one burner rather than four, and maybe you're using it for 10 minutes and then you turn it off, and if you've got your, your stove out of calibration, then you'll get a small dose for that 10 minutes. By contrast, you know, if you leave it on for a longer period of time, an hour or whatever, then you have a different set of conditions. Uh, be aware that if your stove is 5% out of calibration, you can actually have a 200 part per million um, flow into the house. And, you know, to give you a flavor, 200 parts per million is a big number. It, if you've got any sort of a reading inside the house, it's an indication of a problem. Don't cover the pans um, on your stove. So, for example, a lot of uh, homeowners will realize that it's kind of a pain, with, especially with a gas stove, to try and clean and scrub the bottom side of that, uh, of that gas burner. You know, it gets tough. So they'll, they'll add aluminum foil. Well, what that does is it changes the air flows in and around that gas burner and it can cause incomplete combustion, which in turn causes carbon monoxide. So that's a don't. And, you know, we've all seen that done a thousand times, but that's a don't. You don't want to do that. Don't leave the oven open. Again, this is kind of in the same category as don't heat the home with the range. Service the burners when the flames are not a solid, non-dancing blue. If we've got a solid blue that doesn't dance, we are good. If there's yellow, if there's dancing, maybe there's a little bit of orange. Burner that is out of calibration, it needs to be changed. Because again, if it's out of calibration, that's a carbon monoxide source. And have a carbon monoxide meter nearby, a CO meter. I had briefly mentioned earlier that uh, you'll have in many cases a carbon monoxide meter up on the ceiling and what those are intended to do is to work in combination with the smoke detector to detect a fire more quickly. Sometimes let's say if the carpet is burning a CO detector in that sort of a scenario might be able to detect um, the fire a few seconds before the smoke detector does. But if you've got a slow, long burn source of carbon monoxide, say maybe the fireplace is having a problem or your stove and oven or whatever, um, you don't have a raging fire in places where it shouldn't be. And so that carbon monoxide is going to build up slowly from the floor. And again, by the time that gets up to your eight foot ceiling, or if you've got a vaulted ceiling and it's 12 feet up there, uh, once it reaches that height, you might have a big problem down near the floor. Especially maybe if somebody is already laying down because they're feeling sick, you know, they're laying right into that pool of poison. Have a carbon monoxide meter nearby and have it low near the floor. Uh, maybe you plug it in directly to one of the outlets that are on your walls. And, uh, you know, that's going to be about a foot up and that's, that's a good place to have one. You want to have those in areas that have a potential carbon monoxide uh, leak. So kitchen... Uh, furnace, water heater, fireplace, any one of those. Okay, for the furnace, there are a number of um, carbon monoxide sources as well. One thing you can have is a blocked chimney, and that can happen in a number of ways. As the home inspector, I see where raccoons love to get into chimneys, and they'll block those that way. They can have their pups there, and you can imagine what would happen if the raccoon... <laughs> I have stories. 
Uh, there was one where they actually heard the raccoon in there, and so they lit a fire to get the raccoon out. So any number of bad things could happen. One is that the raccoon actually doesn't get out and dies, and now they've got carbon monoxide that is trying to leave with the fireplace, through the fireplace flu, and it can't, so it's going to actually kill the people inside the house. You can imagine a number of other scenarios, but it's not good. So you got the block chimney. I have actually seen where wasps will get in to the chimney and make this huge wasp nest that turns a maybe a 12 by 12 flue into maybe a three inch diameter gap. And so again, you've got carbon monoxide that is not leaving through the flue, so it's going back out into the house. A uh, similar sort of thing can happen with back drafting. Now, to explain this, Let's say that you've got the fireplace on, whether it's gas or wood or whatever, and that fire is trying to leave. Especially if it's gas, it can be kind of scary because wood fires come with smoke, uh, gas fires do not. But then let's say that maybe you have the bathroom fan on, let's say that you have the dryer on, and those, um, those appliances are causing air to leave the home. So now the home is saying, hey, I need replacement air from somewhere. And so the, the chimney becomes the first candidate for replacement air. And now if we got the fireplace on too, then instead of air leaving the home, you've got this backdraft coming into the house. And that backdraft is carrying all the carbon monoxide that should have been leaving the home, but is not. So um, under these sorts of conditions, you've got a potentially deadly environment and the homeowner would never think, for example, that having the bathroom fan on and or you know, other things, the, the dryer could actually create a deadly condition. One answer to that is actually to have the combustion air source, which is required for most, well, for all newer homes. Another related story that I have that is telling is the, um, I re actually read in the newspaper, and this was a number of years ago, where an old lady had died. And uh, what had happened, and this was a carbon monoxide poisoning, but she didn't have a lot of money and she had a roof that needed to be replaced. So she hired the cheap guy. He went up and he kind of sort of knew how to do the job. And he, went, he was uh, doing his, his thing the first day, stripping stuff off and prepping. And then he left his tools up there at night and he came back the next day and he knocked on her door to let her know that she was, or that he was going to get started again. And she didn't answer the door. So he banged a little harder and eventually he called the police. He says, uh, you know, my customer, this lady, is not answering the door. So they broke through the door and they found her and she was dead. And it turned out that what happened is uh, this roofer, um, he was probably just a handyman, somebody that needed the paycheck, but he had left his tools on top of her chimney flue. And so with his tools blocking the flue, the carbon monoxide that was trying to leave the home through that flue could not, and it killed her. Critter nests. You know, I'd mentioned the raccoons. Sometimes you can get birds in there, uh, whatever it is, and you know, just have that be on your radar. The burn chamber in the furnace can crack, especially when they're older and or in poor condition and uh, then you get that crack, then you get the carbon monoxide that can transfer between uh, what should be clean air and what should be exhaust air. And then lastly, you got holes in the flue. Now I'm thinking of the home that I grew up in. Uh, that home was built in 1959, and my dad used to like to build these uh, big roaring fires. And what would happen is we'd get um, we'd get the creosote fire, the creosote inside the flue, and then the creosote with the new big roaring fires, the creosote would light on fire. And now you've got a, a fire that's not only in the fireplace, but it's also all the way through the flue. And then of course, that is completely uncontrolled. If you've got holes in the flue, now you're spreading that fire into the attic and the house burns down. Uh, similarly, if you have just one step less than that, let's say that we don't have the creosote, maybe we don't have the creosote fire, but we do have the holes in the flues, you can actually have the, especially if the flue is blocked in any particular way on top, you can have the carbon monoxide leave through those holes, and then you've got uh, the carbon monoxide back in the house, and you've got the potentially deadly conditions.